abandoned building or house. I don't start photographing right away. I stand there in the quiet amongst the broken glass and rusted machinery, and I let the buildings just speak to me. And that's when I start noticing the brightly colored walls, the brickwork, and the masonry hiding under layers of kudzu, rust, and mold. <laughs> hey, everybody. So, uh, <laughs> so rural exploration, or Rurex, is the exploration of abandoned spaces uh, for the interest of art, historical interest, and adventure. And of course, the rural part means I'm roaming the countryside looking for sketchy places. And uh, the uh, opposite side of that is urbex, which is in the city. So you see a lot of steel mills and things like that. But my, my focus is uh, the South Carolina countryside. So being a rural explorer means that I spend a lot of time in dark places. And as someone living with depression, I spend a lot of time in dark places literally and figuratively. So I'll spare you the Wikipedia read-through of what depression is and how it affects your mental and physical well-being. And I'll just say it straight out. Depression is absolute bullshit. It's crazy, right? So I'm not saying it's not real. It's definitely real. But it, the way that it makes you feel is, is, is it's BS. So hey, mom. I'm sorry I said that word. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, it makes you feel like you're isolated. It makes you feel like the dark is where you belong. And it makes you feel that no one will ever love you. And even if they did love you, you certainly don't deserve it. So I know what it's like to dis disappear under layers of decay, waiting for someone to find me. So I was diagnosed with depression in graduate school, where I was studying, of all things, counselor education. And I knew, as a new counselor that knew everything, that only sleeping a couple hours a night for a couple of weeks was probably not a good thing. Uh, so I decided to go to the medical center for help, hoping to be uh, prescribed something that would help me finally get some rest. And so when I met with my doctor, after hearing the, the, the usual questions, uh, he asked me one thing. He said. Do you, have, do you know if you have a history of depression? And of course, knowing everything, I said no. I was just tired, obviously. Aren't you the doctor? You just see that. And uh, he said, you know, I want you to do me a favor. And he gave me an instruction um, that probably saved my life at that point. He said, I want you to make an appointment with a therapist and then come back to me. And so, of course, I wanted to prove him wrong, so I made the appointment. And after, again, asking the usual questions, my therapist asked me something that changed everything. She said, tell me what's been going on that's keeping you from, from sleeping. And it was like a damn broke. Everything that I'd had pent up, things that I knew and things that I didn't know, kind of poured forth from me, and I felt relief for the first time. And so my path out of darkness was struck at that point. And I was, I was diagnosed antidepressants, and of course I had my doubts. I was afraid that I would uh, become a person that had too many emotions, that goes to, went to a person that had no emotions at all. And so I didn't want to be a robot, so I fought against that, but I went ahead and I took them, and it did change me. It changed me for, in a positive direction. It allowed me to manage my emotions. Sad was really sad, and happy was indeed happy. So I knew exactly how I was feeling, and I can process that like everybody else at that time. Um, and I processed that clarity through my art. So art was something that I'd always clung to. Uh, it's, something, it's a way that you can say anything you wanted while using few words. And so I uh, started exploring the countryside, going on long drives, and I started noticing these homes just hanging out under kudzu. And uh, when you have depression, sometimes you make bad choices. And uh, <laughs> I started uh, 
looking through windows, peeking through doors, going in those doors, and, uh, and seeing what, lied with, what, what lay within. And uh, I, at that moment, I stopped seeing these places as buildings. Excuse me. I feel like a superstar when I did that. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Um, so I stopped seeing these places as buildings. I started seeing them as sleeping giants, as, as actual beings that had stories that needed to be told. I mean, these places, they were homes once. People lived there. People loved there once. Uh, they had stories that were essential to where we are today in our country. Now this one here, I'll have to say, is this one is a house in Westminster. And uh, after I left this house and developed a photo, someone said, I think you were in a meth house. Oh, well, <laughs> whoopsies. So, <laughs> so I, I uh, survived that. I'm here to, here to say that I am, I am okay. Uh, so, uh, so my friends will tell you that I personify these buildings. I uh, talk about them like they're actual people. I use the, the pronouns she and he and all of that. Um, but one, one place that I had particular kinship with uh, was Courtney Mill in Newry, South Carolina. And some of you may be familiar with the mill. Uh, Courtney uh, sits on at, at the edge of a small village um, that she used to support. And uh, she supported the village until she ceased operations in 1975. Now, in her heyday, she was a center of cotton plant processing. And inside, she had walls that were brilliantly painted. That was one of the first things I noticed about her. Um, she had uh, beautiful brickwork throughout. Like, people really took their time to build these mills. And the, the windows in her towers were this perfect Tiffany blue. And so that was just something that struck me about her the first time I got to go and visit her. So now Nuri Mill, she, he, Courtney Mill actually, uh, she lives on in stories of Nuri at its heyday. Um, its production floors are silent, full of rotting wood and, uh, and, and holes. And the, uh, as you can see there, the windows are, they lie in the ivy that have grown up around the building. And so you don't really see a lot of people going through Courtney Mill, one, because it's not the safest place, and two, because, you know, people don't really know her story. So recently, you may have heard in the news that Courtney caught fire after a lightning strike, and she was suddenly back in the public consciousness. And sometimes it takes that spark or near destruction for you to realize that what's really precious that you are important, and on the flip side, you really see someone for what they really are and what they may be going through. And so, if you're living with uh, depression, just know, just like New Mill, you're very important. You have a story that needs to be told. You may be battered a little bit, your glass may be broken, but we need to know what you added to our, our, world, our world story. And for people who love us living with depression, sometimes you're going to have to make choices that you didn't think you would make. You have to peek behind windows. You're going to have to climb over walls that we've built around ourselves. And you're going to have to risk getting cut by some of the barbs that we put around our, our hearts there. And it's worth it. We, sometimes we're just waiting there for someone to help us get out of that. Now, there's going to be times where, I'm going to be a superstar again. Um, there's going to be times where you don't know what to do. Um, and all you can do is watch from afar. And I would never say that it's not okay. Sometimes you can love somebody and you want nothing but their health and survival and for them to know how important they are to you. But there are also going to be times that you don't know what to do and you have to sit and watch from afar until you know exactly how you can help. So I'll tell you a story about um, the, time, the time I took my parents actually shooting with me one time. And I'm sure you're wondering how my parents feel about me doing this. They do not like it. Okay, so they, my mom has made me promise not to go to any site by myself 
because she's afraid I'm going to fall down a well shaft and die. So, uh, so I promise that I won't, won't, won't do that. Uh, so I took my parents with me, and we decided to go and explore my, my dad's hometown of Chester, South Carolina. Um, and my dad was really excited to show me the mill that he worked at as, as, a, as a teenager. And that, that morning, as I got ready, I was packing my lenses and my camera and my air filter mask. There's a lot of, that goes into this. My mom comes out, and she shows me how she prepared for this. She had two outfits. One, this is, these are her own words, one, that um, in case we had to run away quickly, <laughs> and the other, in case we had to climb over things. <laughs> and so at that moment, I never loved my mom more than that moment because she knew how important this was to me to the point that she planned outfits for it. <laughs> so I, uh, shout out to my mom. And I should mention at this point, that both outfits were white. So, yeah. So, you know, you never know. So, um, when we were going to our first site, my parents decided that they weren't going to explore with me. They were going to wait in the car where the air conditioning was, and they would drive slowly when I went out of sight. So... I, I've never, you know, when I go shooting, I don't, I'm not used to a car. I usually have a car behind me. I should probably go, right? So it's, 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 yeah, this is where they were comfortable. But at that point, they weren't sure they were ready to take that journey with me. They knew that they were comfortable watching from afar, but they didn't know how to reach in there and, and grab me. So um, eventually, they got out of the car and walked around with me. And it meant so much because it meant that they saw just what I'm doing, just how important it was to me, and that this was indeed my self-care. And so sometimes when you love somebody um, with depression, sometimes it takes you a little bit, but it makes so much, it's, it's such a big difference when we see that you're walking next to us. And even if we're looking behind you, behind us, and we see that you are you know, supporting us from afar, as long as we know that you're in our lives, sometimes that makes the hugest difference. And so today, I'm able to live a full and creative life. I uh, am still taking antidepressants, still going to therapy, and uh, I'm able to, and now my, my work, my art, has uh, allowed me to spread this message across the world. So, um, all I have to say is that by giving myself over to these buildings and learning their stories, I learned my own story and I learned how precious I was, and they, they basically saved me. And so at this point, I know how to come out of the dark on my own and reach for the light. Thank you.